What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. In today's quick tutorial, I'll be showing you how to set up the ESP32 with the MPU6050 to start getting acceleration and gyro values using the Arduino IDE in this video. This is going to be a quick tutorial geared towards beginners who are just getting started off with the MPU6050 and this microcontroller. And for those of you guys who don't know, this is the first time working with this microcontroller on this channel, so it's pretty exciting. So give a subscribe if you're looking forward to more content on this channel regarding the ESP32 because I know it is a very popular microcontroller other than the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi Pico and Pico W models, which we have been working previously on this channel. So enough being said, let's jump straight into it with this diagram here. So I'm gonna imagine you already have some jumper wires and you already have a soldered ESP32 and a soldered uh, MPU6050. I'll link those down in the description below. You can actually buy both of those soldered and you can buy jumper wires anywhere off Amazon. Just search jumper wires for Arduino or Raspberry Pi and you'll find a bunch and they're super cheap, six, seven dollar jumper wires and you get hundreds of them for that price. So you only need those things and you have to connect it exactly as we have here. Um, there's some other various ways you can connect it because we have other um, SDA and SCL pins on this ESP32, which we're not gonna get into in the scope of this video. But if you connect it like this, you should be good to go in terms of jumping into the code after this. The only other thing you have to do after this is actually plug it into the power and you should be set to go. I just wanna advise you guys, make sure you do not mix up the VCC and the ground pins when you're doing things like this because you can fire your sensor and cause damage to electronics. And just be careful when you're setting up the VCC and ground pins there. In terms of SCL and SDA, it's okay if you mix those up, but you will get errors in your code if you try running it. Just try to get those right the first time. And enough being said, let's jump into the code setup in the Arduino IDE. Okay, so jumping into the Arduino IDE, I'm just gonna assume as a prerequisite you already have that installed. If not, you can just Google Arduino IDE and it's free to get started with. Once you're in there, the first thing you wanna do is I'm just going to assume it's your first time working with this board in the Arduino IDE. So if you want to get started with ESP32 boards in Arduino IDE, you just wanna to go to the left here, click Boards Manager and search ESP32. And you can just download this ESP32 by Espressif and download it and all the related dependencies. It'll ask you if you want to download the related dependencies, just click yes and download that. It should be fairly quick. So you should be able to have those boards in your board manager in the Arduino IDE to connect to this board. The next thing you want to do is once you have the board, you want to download the library that we're going to be using in this video, which is very convenient and gives us all the means to work with MPU 6050 right away without having to know how to deal with binary data and that sort of thing. And that's the Adafruit MPU 6050 library. So you can just go to the library manager on the left, search Adafruit and search MPU 6050. And you just want to download this library here. And I already downloaded it. And once again, just install it and all its related dependencies. And that's all you need in terms of the setup there for what you have to download in the Arduino IDE. Once you have that, let's go to the tools up here and make sure we select the proper board. So I went to the board, I went to ESP32, and I just selected ESP32 dev module. And then the next thing you want to do is select that and you want to select the port that's connected to your computer. So if you did select this to, or if you did plug this into your computer properly, you should see a new serial port pop up. Just click the one that popped up, which is the devcu.usb serial 0001. In my case, yours will be slightly different, so don't be alarmed if you see something else, that's fine. Just go ahead and click it. And once we do those two things, that we have the board and the port, which I already selected. What we want to do next is when we download such libraries, what's nice about the libraries is they offer example code, which allows us to get started really quickly with working with sensors, especially with the Adafruit libraries that have many nice examples. So if you're in the Arduino ID, what you can do is you can go to the top, you can go to examples and you can go down. And if you install the Adafruit MPU 6050 library properly, you can see all these examples. So today we're just gonna work with the basic readings and this should give us a Kickstarter to get started with this, to get the gyro and acceleration values. So let's just go ahead and click that. And it's going to take us to another Arduino IDE window, that is fine. And we can see that it has all the code ready for us. So if you set everything up right away, you can just go ahead and upload this and you can start seeing values. But I just wanna go over some basic things that you can do with this basic readings code. So pretty much what it's doing is it's just connecting to your MPU 6050 and it is setting some specific ranges for your MPU 6050. So for those of you guys who don't know, if you're just working off with a sensor, it actually has more than one range for the acceleration values and the gyro values. So you can actually measure negative uh, plus minus 
uh, 2G and plus minus 4G, all the way up to plus minus 16G with those four settings. And the reason you have these sort of settings is because the higher the setting, first of all, the lower resolution and the more power it takes. Uh, so you want to gauge these settings based on your application. If you have a low G application, you probably want to just go to this uh, ne negative or plus minus two Gs because that's the amount of acceleration you'll be experiencing at most. And so you don't want to sacrifice uh, power drawn by the sensor and accuracy just for being able to measure more Gs. And the same thing goes for the gyroscopic setting here. So we can see that we have different levels of how many degrees per second we can measure in terms of the gyroscopic values. So you can actually go ahead and set, set this. And the same logic applies here. So the higher degrees you want to measure, the more power and less accuracy you get. So just know it's a little bit of a trade-off there. It's not that much of a trade-off and you might not notice it in small prototyping cases, but some people may want to play around the setting. And in order to do that, you can just set the gyro range here and you can set the MPU range here. So those are two very simple things you can do that offer you more use cases for the sensor to get higher ranges of values you can get from the sensor. So we're just gonna leave off with the base setting here with the eight Gs and the 500 degrees. And we're just going to go ahead and run this code. So we could see in the loop here what it's going to do. It's going to get the acceleration. It's going to get the temperature. So this actually, the sensor offers the temperature, which I believe is the temperature of the sensor itself. I'm not sure, but it's not really super useful for this particular sensor and it's not highly accurate, but it does offer some temperature value, which, which is not really used for its applications. And of course we get a G value, which is the gyro value in the X, Y, and Z. So we get six degrees of freedom. This is a six degree of freedom accelerometer, which means we get AX, AY, AZ, which is the linear accelerations. And we get the gyro X, gyro, gyro Y, gyro Z, which is the angular accelerations in those three uh, axes. And finally, we get the temperature in degrees Celsius. So we're just gonna go ahead and run this. And one last thing here is we have this little delay. So that's just the delay between each reading. So that's 500 milliseconds. So you can always decrease this or increase this depending on how frequently you want to increase the, the frequency of reading. So if you want it every one second, you can just do this to a thousand. So let's just go ahead and have that. And if we did everything correctly, we can just go ahead and upload this. And let me just move my head to the right there. So give it a sec to upload. Sometimes it takes a quite a while and we can see it's connecting, which is good. And it is writing perfect. So now it looks like it uploaded it correctly. Now you may be wondering, well, where is the output? Well, if it's your first time using Arduino ID, what you have to do is you have to go to the serial monitor here and you have to select the correct baud rate. So make sure your baud rate is in sync with this baud rate or you'll see some weird symbols here. And we can see that we are getting values and that does make sense for what I'm seeing here. So if I go ahead and move the accelerometer around, we can see that we are getting a change in the values here. So the, the more I'm shaking it, the more I'm getting a change in the X. And if I start twisting it around, we get different radians per second, which makes sense and you can go ahead and test yours to see it at different orientations to see if the readings make sense. There are some calibrations you can do with the MPU 6050. I have some of that on my channel, which I'll link right here. I did that with the Raspberry Pi Pico W, but the process is the same thing. So if you're interested in calibrating the sensor to make it more accurate, go ahead and watch that video. Also, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something new and you enjoyed the quickness and the way I explained this, please subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you wanna see in the comment section down below. And as always guys, stay tuned and thanks for watching.